do you do it? Gumusta. And hello, Gina. Nice to see you in the comments. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm back on the tiny studio build. Also, a heads up that I just released a short here on the channel featuring my flat pack stainless steel camping stove, the Rocket King. I realize that some of you who are new viewers might not realize that I manufacture this stove, which I kickstarted a couple of years ago. There's this size, which is the full size, and a micro, which is about 70% scale. They're both available on Amazon, and every now and then I remind you that I made this. <laughs> I am gonna start doing more shorts related to this stove just to help promote it here on YouTube. If you like watching those shorts, you can watch them, hit the like button, and YouTube will send you that content. If you'd rather just stick to watching my longer videos, simply don't watch them, and YouTube won't send you notifications about that content. They're actually serving long form videos and shorts videos on separate feeds. So if you wanna see it, great. If you don't, that's great too. I just appreciate y'all watching. All right, on to the project. I purchased this pond liner material, which is EPDM rubber, several years ago with intentions of doing a pond. This is what I'm gonna to use to cap the inner roof. I've got a stock of some one inch insulation scraps. A lot of this was used for cribbing, for delivery of windows and such for my house construction. I use this to insulate the roof underneath the rubber. I have some one inch insulation that went behind the zip panels on my house as well. I'll bring some of this also. You can see where it was glued to the back of the sheathing would have been attached like this. So the entire outside of my house is covered with this combination. The sheathing with the vinyl layer and then one inch of rigid foam insulation behind that. This is an R6, but it's outside the stud. So the studs would have been here. So this layer of insulation helps break the thermal bridge where heat is moving through the studs which have a much lower R value. The metal roofing company that supplied the materials for my garage roof sent these, which for some reason the roofer didn't like. I'm gonna use these to secure the rubber roof down and create a drip edge. So these are brand new, of course, they just were gonna be thrown away and I wouldn't let that happen, of course. I think I bought this as a remnant, so I don't remember how big it is. Oddly enough, this is 11 feet long, which is exactly how long I need it to be and it's a little over seven and a half feet wide. So I need it six feet wide. So I'm just gonna cut it a foot and a half off one side and I'll be good to go. The tank tube bracket I'm going to use to attach the roof to the structure is this one. And as you can see, I need more than just the width of one two by four. So I'm gonna make some spacers to go in here that I'll use construction adhesive to connect to the headers. And that will allow me to use all three of these mounting holes with some nice long screws to get them all the way down into those headers. I'm gonna use some chipboard to make some templates and then I'll cut those blocks at home. Started out rough, I'm gonna trim it down to fit. And on the top side. This is the perfect use for some small scraps of wood. Eyes and ears, JW. Because my rafters aren't located exactly where I need to screw the brackets in, I'm also gonna create some double wide brackets. This happened to be 
a post I used for cribbing at the bottom of a pile and termites got to one end of it. But I'm just gonna chop that off. I marked out the centers and installed the spacers. Trains here. Spacers are in. And now for the insulation, which I'm just going to tack in place with some nails. Yeah, this one inch insulation is a little green, a little mossy, a little dirty, but it's still gonna insulate. I can't tell you how happy I am that I saved this. And I'm even more happy that now I'm using it. How many of you can feel me on that one? <laughs> it's not hoarding, it's resource containment and utilization. I got proper shoes on today. The last few pieces. The insulation is on. Nicely trimmed out. That's what I'm talking about. I love it when the plan comes together. Dun 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 dun.
I'm gonna tack up the drip edge with a couple of nails and then secure the rubber down with screws. These are self-tapping. They have a bit of a flare on them too to, that ought to hold the rubber down well. It's getting late. I'm gonna call it a day. Be back at it again tomorrow. The tack down on the rubber roof is a little uneven, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to cover it later. Whew, I'm worn out. It's because I'm getting old, but I'm still having a great time doing this project. I've got my drip edge on, the rubber roof is tacked down, insulation underneath it, and I'm going to stop this video here. The tink tube roof is going up next and I want to make sure I have enough time to cover that well in a video. So that's going to get its own video next Saturday. Thanks so much my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I really do appreciate the vote of confidence and the support that that gives me. If you'd like to join me on Patreon or in the membership area here on YouTube, you can check out the links below. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. By doing this studio build out of reclaimed materials, I'm saving a whole lot of green and I'm putting that to good use here at Music on Main Street. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Saturday.